Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is G and this is my Ball Python Ka. And today is gonna be a kind of a vloggish type of video where we're gonna that was so cute. So where we're going to be going and doing some day-to-day -day tasks, watering, feeding, all that fun stuff. You won't see everyone in this video because not everyone needs daily maintenance, of course, but it should still be fun and exciting. So let's go ahead and get started. So of course starting out the day to day after turning on all the lights which I just skipped we're doing the misting of course. This is Maleficent's enclosure who is my mountain horn dragon and of course she needs super high humidity. Well not super high but pretty high humidity so she does get a fairly decent mist down every single morning. Um, she used to have a boyfriend in here but he's not in here anymore. I will go into detail about that uh, a little bit later but I think she's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and stick her bowl of bugs back in here. I do keep a bowl in here because she eats better from the bowl of bugs than from tongs. But I'm just going to go ahead and close her up now. Um, she's all good to go, so we're just going to move right along. So moving right along, we have Mulan's enclosure here. I actually don't know where she is. She's probably in this hide. She's typically always in this hide. And... I actually do not see her in this hide. I actually have no idea where she is then because she basically lives inside this. So, uh, hopefully we don't have our first escape here on the channel, <laughs> but she might be in this right hide as well. So yeah, okay, so she's definitely in this right hide. She never comes over here. Uh, if you don't know, Mulan is my super hypo sunglo jungle boa constrictor and she's absolutely beautiful love her but we are gonna go ahead and get some misting done for her it's just a quick spray down um just because it's a top opening enclosure i do want to open or not open i do want to keep the humidity pretty high and pretty up so i do give her a fairly good mist down in the morning um and we have some uh, sphagnum moths in there as well to go ahead and keep the humidity as well um out of my boa constrictor she definitely has the second pretty enclosure um, of course Aurora has the best enclosure in the house for snakes but um, we're gonna go ahead and move along since we're all done here so speaking of Aurora her enclosure is up next to get a mist down she is my Brazilian rainbow boa constrictor and she is a very 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 big girl she definitely has the full six feet um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we do keep everything nice and cute in here Brazilian rainbow boas need cool temperatures well cool for reptiles um, as well as it to be pretty decently humid in here. Her enclosure stays at about 70, in the 70s roughly. Um, and then once we're done spraying here, we're actually going to see if she decided to shed or not. So let's check. So she is in this hide. So let's just take a quick peek here. And she does have her beautiful rainbow showing. However, I do not see a shed in here. I wasn't expecting it. When she sheds, it's like sprawled off from one end of the enclosure to the other end of the enclosure. So that isn't shocking. <sighs> Such a disappointment. But uh, let's just go ahead and move on since she didn't shed. All right, so next up we have Aladdin, my male boa constrictor. He prefers a small hide. He does have a bigger hide down here, this plastic one, but he doesn't ever use it. He just likes to be in this one, so I just kept it in there. Um, he is currently in the shed, and we're going to be going ahead and misting down his enclosure so he can have a happy, healthy, and wonderful shed. Got to keep the humidity up when your snakes are in shed. It's super important for them. Not for all of them, but for a good amount of them, especially these tropical species or you know species of that like around the 60s the 70s 80s whatever it is keep the humidity up when they're in shed it'll be perfect so these guys are what you didn't see in my feeding all reptiles video which my which are my egyptian false cobras jack is there is on the right side and his girlfriend sally here is on the left side inside of the hide their enclosure is always kind of messy just because they're pretty destructive they're a burrowing type of species and so let's go ahead and lift up the hide and check on sally yep she's right in there she did just eat so she's pretty full and pretty done for today um but i absolutely love watching them they dig like shovels if you haven't seen my instagram video it's it's amazing um and their camouflage is just perfect 
Oh, moving along to Bambi, who is my new guinea frilled dragon. I love her. She is currently in shed, as you can see on her back frills and legs, and a little bit on the tail. We're going to be changing her water, pulling out some stuff, and uh, getting her nice and taken care of. So first things first, we take care of this water. It's pretty dirty in there, so I'm going to have to take her out since it supports one of the branches. And this isn't really going to be that fun because she's a little jumpy. Yep. So I'll be back um, when I get her when I when I get her out. <laughs> Okay, so now that I actually have her, I'm just gonna go ahead and let her soak for a bit. I never do this anyway, but she's in shed, so might as well go ahead and help her get the shed off. <laughs> and then just because we always see Bambi's enclosure from the back, which looks awful, this is Bambi's enclosure from the front. I do need to add, I think, one or two more branches to the right side, but she has plenty of climbing space. Um, I probably will add some more greenery in here as well. I've been thinking about hanging some plants from the from the top but we'll see how that goes she's good for now so while bambi is soaking here we're gonna try and feed the false egyptian cobra they haven't really mastered the tong thing um so if he doesn't take it which he probably won't i'm just gonna lay it down and yeah see i don't know they're just not very tongy I maybe they'll get used to it I'm not sure but since we didn't catch them in the feeding um all my reptiles video I'm gonna go ahead and show him eating his frozen thawed rat or mouse mouse I think pretty sure it's a mouse <laughs> um and let him do his thing the female already ate so she's doing her thing I am separating them for this just because the female is super greedy and she will just spend her entire time trying to eat his food So this is the home of the Kila, my false water cobra. Right now it is dirty in here and kind of boring. You can see she, he took a giant poop. The water level is basically non-existent. And honestly, we need to add a lot, a lot more substrate. And I kind of want to rearrange and change some things up just to make it more interesting for him. It's been kind of boring. Um, next door neighbor is Mowgli. Not too much is going to go on with Mowgli in this video. He doesn't really have too much to do. No misting necessary or anything. So we're going to go ahead and actually, we'll see what we get into. We'll see. So here is Akila on my dog hair infested bed, but that's fine. Uh, Akila is a false water cobra. He is male. I know the name can sound female, but he is male. And he is so polite for false water cobras. I mean, they're in general, if you handle them and work with them, they're usually pretty polite. You can get them very polite. Um, he's an absolute sweetheart. I do take him out with tongs, not with tongs, uh, with a snake hook though, just to be on the safe side because they do have a very, very wild feeding response. But other than that, he's perfect. Okay, so I already took everything out and sanitized everything. There's no water in here. But what I ended up doing was taking some of those plants and I actually ended up cutting off the branches or leaves on them and I ended up turning them into grass around the enclosure. I spread out the dirt and everything. I do give him less, um, I guess, surface area to walk on not walk on he doesn't have legs um <laughs> to go on because he does like to burrow false water cobras are also super prone to water if you give them space to swim they'll spend all their time in there so we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and i will show you exactly what it looks like okay so here's what it looks like with everything actually inside of it he has the grass he has the bridge he has the water his hide is back there in the back with his favorite rocks you can't see back there too well i know um but i think it looks great he does have his basking bridge this is where he actually comes out to bass which is just perfect i love seeing that um the grass looks good he does have his little hiding spot in the back because he does like to be in the water and hide a lot um and i think he will actually enjoy it i don't too put this much effort typically into baby enclosures because you're just going to get rid of them but i think he will be super pleased being in here 
So I was actually expecting him to be in a full hooded display. That's what he typically looks like when I open a tub, but instead I just find a whole bunch of pee poop looking stuff. So I couldn't record putting him back in. He is kind of a, a lot when putting back into the enclosure, but he is starting to move around, smell new things, and look at that face coming out to the enclosure. And of course, this is what I mean when I say if you give false water cobra something big enough to actually swim in versus just a water dish to soak in or something like that, they will absolutely use it. He spends 99.9% .9 of his time in here. Aside from basking and sleeping, he stays in here all day. And last but certainly not least, we have Kida the Tegu, who believe it or not, I actually cleaned this enclosure like two days ago and it looks like I haven't done anything at all. So we are gonna be going in here cleaning, especially that dirty water dish and getting her nice and fed. She's not going down for winter. So of course we need to go ahead and get baby Tegu out of the enclosure. And I use my jacket just because her nails are not that fun when she's trying to get out because she grabs and yeah it's just not that fun so we use a jacket just to go ahead and get her out of the enclosure and i will be lifting her off and putting her on the bed to go ahead and relax so i go ahead and change that water bowl that she loves to dump dirt into for whatever reason and uh, get some things done in there so it's looking a little better in here i'm gonna go ahead and grab kita now um, and see if she's ready to eat Oh, for fuck's sake. All right, so that was definitely not as graceful as I wanted to go in. She kind of just jumped right on in, but she headed straight for the water. Of course, you don't have water if you just put mounds of dirt into it, but we're just going to ignore that fact. She's a tegu, um, and that's what they do. They make a mess, and they enjoy doing it, so be prepared. So here we have a pretty basic small meal for Kita. She has been slowing down on feeding, but I can tell she's not going down. So we're just gonna give her a little bit of chicken, a little bit of tomatoes, and just call it a, wow, okay. So I said she was slowing down, but she's obviously like super hungry. So, you know, that's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the bowl here and let her do her thing. That's it for today's video. If you did like the video, of course, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And to keep up with me as well, you can follow me on Instagram at Rotile Trainer G. And then we will see you in the next one.